Number 9. Area 51 Many people know of Area 51 from popular culture as well as the waves of mystery and secrecy surrounding it. Sited in the state of Nevada in the U.S., Area 51 was founded in 1955 as a way to help America gain the upper hand over the Soviet Union in the years of the Cold War. However, it quickly became associated with conspiracy theories due to how top secret the entire facility was. In fact, such little information was known about it for so long that some people still speculated if it even really existed up until 2013. Many still believe Area 51 has something to do with extraterrestrial life, and then in the 1950s and 1960s, reports of UFOs to air traffic control became extremely common all over the country. Many of these reports were from people mistaking military aircraft or even just clouds for flying saucers, and one such rumor started when an airplane that had been tested at Area 51, the U-2 spy plane, was seen flying at over 65,000 feet in the air when the public at the time had only known military planes to fly at a maximum of around 40,000 feet. But if there's one thing known for certain about Area 51, is that the base is extremely well guarded, which makes believers all the more skeptical. Military personnel are on a constant watch for trespassers and threats at the base. There's a large fenced perimeter that begins at a great distance before the actual base is even in view to the average passerby. The guards who patrol the perimeter will not answer any questions asked by travelers or Area 51 enthusiasts. They're also authorized to use deadly force, and are even allowed to shoot to kill if deemed necessary. Photography is also prohibited, and you'll be confronted by guards if they see you trying to take pictures of the base. Who knows what could happen if a person actually succeeded at breaking in? What would they find? The only ones who know are sworn to secrecy. Number 8. Norway's Doomsday Seed Vault Built on the island of Splitsbergen in northern Norway, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault provides protection against potential global food shortages by containing and preserving duplicate copies of different seed types from around the world. The vault is officially managed and maintained through an agreement between the Norwegian government, the Global Crop Trust, and the Nordic Genetic Resource Center, or Norgen for short. So yes, it's a pretty big deal. In the 1980s, Norgen was already starting to stock up on frozen seeds by keeping them in abandoned coal mining areas. Even then, the seed vault wasn't open until 2008, with the first seeds being stored there at the beginning of January. In order to keep the seeds safe, the vault is strongly watched over to the point where access to the seeds inside can't be granted to researchers, plant breeders, and others interested in them because instead they must get additional copies of the seeds from a gene bank. No unintentional contamination can occur. In its entire history as of 2021, only two direct withdrawals have happened from the global seed vault, once in 2015 and another time in 2017. The International Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas, also known as ACARDA, was responsible for both withdrawals, planting seeds they obtain in Lebanese and Moroccan fields. As of 2021, there are exactly 1,074,533 total seed samples being kept in the seed bank. So if the world ever goes into chaos and you just happen to know how to farm, this might be the perfect place for you. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome! Thanks for checking us out! If you're liking this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already! Number 7. ADX Florence Prison the U.S. Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility, also known as the ADX Florence Prison, opened in 1994 near the city of Florence in the state of Colorado. The prison is known for housing the worst criminals in the nation, especially those who had proven to be too violent or aggressive towards prison staff and other inmates to remain in the lower level facilities. There are 344 inmates in the prison as of July of this year, and all of them are confined 23 hours of every day in concrete single cells. The facility itself is 37 acres in total and roughly 100 miles south of the city of Denver. Each cell contains a solid steel door, a bed, shower, sink, steel mirror, a TV, and a concrete stool with a table. The windows to the cell are 4 feet in length and only show parts of the sky and roof which makes it nearly impossible to plan escape attempts since none of the inmates ever know their exact location within the complex. 
Exercise areas are also made out of concrete and have high walls that also prevent the prisoners from figuring out where they are. The prison itself has motion detectors, security cameras, and about 1,400 doors that are remote controlled. The perimeter of the whole prison is surrounded by pressure pads that are triggered by any force out on top of them, as well as a 12-foot tall barbed wire fence. The prison has armed guards patrolling its borders 24-7, and other guards monitor the inmates to make sure they remain where they are supposed to be at all times. So there's no way anyone is pulling in Alcatraz here. Number 6. Fort Knox Located south of Louisville, Kentucky in the United States, Fort Knox is a famous military base installation. Named in honor of the first ever U.S. Secretary of War, Henry Knox, the area was officially made into a permanent training center back in 1918 after a long military-related history. In 1936, the site became a center for mechanization tactics within the military, making it extremely important and highly classified as it held secrets to military strategy. Because of its importance, today Fort Knox is well protected and guarded. Its security measures are put in place by the U.S. Treasury and include constant soldier patrols guarding all areas of the campus as well as several different combination locks on the fort's vaults. Even then, the fort has faced its own fair share of breaches and violence. In 1993, a man named Arthur Hill opened fire inside Fort Knox's training support center, ultimately killing three people and wounding an additional two before turning his gun on himself. Two decades after this incident, in 2013, an employee of the U.S. Army Human Resources Command was fatally shot and killed in the parking lot. U.S. Sergeant Marquinta Jacobs was charged for the murder and sentenced to 30 years in prison the following year. Despite these troubles, the saying, as secure as Fort Knox, still rings true. Have you ever seen one of these places before? Tell us in the comments! If you like this video so far, be sure to subscribe! Number 5. The Korean Demilitarized Zone The Korean Demilitarized Zone, or the DMZ for short, is a line of land in between the nations of North and South Korea that functions as a buffer zone while dividing the Korean Peninsula in half. It's designed to be a meeting point between the two countries where peaceful negotiations can happen. Despite being a peaceful area, it's still heavily guarded by soldiers and has many outposts in and along it to prevent people from side-crossing over willy-nilly. After the end of the hostilities for the Korean War in 1953, the DMZ was created to let each side move their soldiers back to their respective nations peacefully. It also contains a Joint Security Area, or JSA, which is where all negotiations take place. There is a conference room where North and South Korean officials are allowed to meet face-to-face, -face, as well as officials from any other nations. However, despite the idea behind the DMZ, it still has its own history of issues and violent incidents. For instance, in 1976, two U.S. Army officers were murdered by North Korean soldiers in the JSA. In another incident, a Russian tourist who was visiting the DMZ in 1984 ran across the dividing line and yelled that he was defecting. Thirty North Korean soldiers chased after him and started shooting, and South Korean troops began to open fire back at them, resulting in a shootout that killed one South and three North Korean soldiers. There have also been several North Korean dug tunnels that have been found, starting in 1974 when South Koreans discovered a tunnel connecting the two nations. The most recent of these tunnels was found in 1990. These tunnels were likely dug by North Korean nationals trying to defect to the South, though. But above ground, the DMZ isn't a place you want to mess around at. Number 4. The Tumen River Bordering portions of China, North Korea, and Russia, the Tumen River is about 324 miles long and eventually leads into the Sea of Japan. While the river is not necessarily forbidden or off-limits in the traditional sense, it's still shrouded in mystery. The area is known for a large number of North Korean defect attempts. This makes the North Korean side of the border extremely well guarded and highly patrolled by soldiers trying to prevent defectors from reaching either the Russian or Chinese sides of the river. While it's viewed as an easier way to cross than the nearby Amnok River, there are many other dangerous factors that come with using this method to cross over the border, including pollution in the river from Chinese and Russian factories. This makes parts of the river toxic to humans, but many refugees fleeing North Korea still view crossing it as a risk worth taking to find better lives for themselves rather than staying in the oppressive country. 
If they actually manage to evade the guards and other dangers along the way, the trip is only about a mile between the North Korean border and China. However, many are unsuccessful and caught by the soldiers before they can make the full journey. Number 3. North Sentinel Island North Sentinel Island is an island in the Bay of Bengal and is part of the greater Andaman Islands that are under Indian administration. Living on this island is the Sentinelese people, an indigenous tribe that had almost no contact with the world outside. They've been known to defend the island with violent force against anyone who comes too close to it or makes an attempt to enter its shores, which makes it virtually impossible to travel there. The island is protected by the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Act of 1956, which made it illegal for anyone to travel to or get within five miles of the island. The law exists both to prevent the Sentinelese people from being exposed to diseases that they haven't had the chance to develop any immune responses to, but also to protect both travelers and the native people from conflicts that would inevitably erupt between them. Even if you were to bypass the law, it's almost guaranteed that you would still be attacked by the native islanders since there's no way to communicate with them that you are not a threat. They have their own language after all. Since the islanders have had no contact with the larger world, the Indian government doesn't have the ability to charge them for the killings and attacks they participated in when defending their land. Three such attacks include the 2006 deaths of two fishermen who strayed too close to the island, and the killing of a missionary from America named John Allen Chow, who attempted to travel to the island with the goal of teaching the Sentinelese people about Christianity, but was quickly killed by arrows after reaching the island in 2018. While the island doesn't have heavy artillery to worry about, there's no doubt you don't want to be on the bad side of the Sentinelese. Number 2. Granite Mountains Record Fall Around 15 miles away from Salt Lake City in Utah, Granite Mountain is a formidable rock mass located approximately one mile up the side of Little Rock Canyon. But it isn't the mountain itself that's the most fascinating aspect of it, it's what the mountain hides. Inside is the Granite Mountain Record Vault, and this vault is owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the LDS, or more commonly, Mormon Church. The church dug out 600 feet of rock from the northern side of the mountain. What they ended up building contains a facility for record storage, administrative offices, multiple docking areas for both shipping and receiving contents, and a special laboratory for restoring microfilm. The facility itself contains over 2.4 separate rolls of microfilm and an additional 1 million of microfiche. All of these contain familial history documents, and this storage continues to grow annually, with an estimated 40,000 new microfilm rolls being added to the vault each year. While the vault itself is heavily guarded and hard to access, the church has made many of the records public on their website, and it has been converting all the microfilm rolls to a newer digital form since 1999. These efforts help with the Mormon church's continued goal of unlocking what they call family history. Number 1. Bold Lane Car Park Located on Bold Lane in the English city of Derby, the Bold Lane Car Park is a multi-story parking garage that is said to be one of the safest places on Earth. The parking area has a total of 10 stories to it, and 440 total spaces to park cars and other motor vehicles. It was originally opened in 1974, and the car park still operates daily and is often used by shoppers attending the main shopping center also located on Bold Lane. However, it wasn't always safe like you think. In the 1990s, there was a spike in criminal activity in and around the car park, and in 1997 alone, there were around 161 recorded crimes there. City officials sought help from a company called ParkSafe to curb the problem, and the facility reopened with updated security in the following year. Ever since, there hasn't been a single reported crime in the entire facility, which is pretty impressive. Security in the car park starts with giving every driver using the garage a barcoded ticket which is needed to access a parking spot. Each ticket is linked to a spot and special motion sensors in the ground are used as an extra security measure. Drivers must have their ticket to gain access to the building again, and once they pay for their space, the motion sensors are automatically turned off. If they don't pay and the sensor detects that their car is moved, an alarm goes off to alert the facility authorities that the person hasn't followed the law and paid for their parking space. 
The Bolt Lane Car Park is also known for its efforts to keep the quality of the facility at a high standard. They even introduced foam cushions in between each spot when someone complained about a scratch on their car from another car park user's door. We don't know about you, but it sounds like the perfect parking spot. Thanks for watching! What are some other high security places you know of? Which one of these places are you most interested in? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe! See you next time on the Board Badger!